Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tangy Rights. Today we're going to be talking about The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd-Jones, which I received an advanced ebook copy of from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review, but I was definitely going to pre-order this book anyway. Also, I am a little sick, so please forgive my voice and my face. Let's begin. The Drowned Woods is another book that I've fallen completely in love with due to it hitting so many of my niche interests. A water diviner girl, the last of her kind, a fake ass boy, a Kyoto god heir to a thieves guild, and a corgi who may or may not be a spy. Along with three other characters, they're on a quest to destroy a magical world that keeps the prince's land safe. It's a story about folklores and magic and heists. It's wonderful. First love, the setting. This book explores so much more of the world that was introduced in The Bone Houses right up here. The majority of this book takes place in a city that's full of both hustle and bustle and iron to ward off magic and a cave system which is why I truly fell in love with the author's descriptions and her imagination in general. The Welsh influences and folklore are the perfect choice for a horror influenced novel. I've grown up near Wales and heard all about the ghost hauntings and the supernatural sightings and other reported spooky stuff. I will say that there was a suspicious lack of woods for the majority of the book. However, this was balanced out by an acceptable amount of drowning. Second love, the folklore. This book truly showcases how magical and dark Welsh folklore can be. And it's disappointing to see so many reviewers who don't appreciate that and describe the Welsh language as a keyboard slam or a fictional language. I've had a fixation with local folk tales for my entire life and this book appealed to that niche interest. I love reading about tales that are already so close to my heart and I love that it's getting well done representation. This book retells the Welsh myth of Cantor Gwleod, please forgive my pronunciation, a sunken kingdom that supposedly once stood where Cardigan Bay now exists, affectionately referred to as Welsh Atlantis by the author. The tale has many variations but at the centre of several is a young woman who is a keeper of a magical well. Many of the myths say that it was her fault the kingdom was sunk. This book shows what the story would be like if it was told from her perspective. Third love, the epilogue. Also the final scene from the final chapter. These two moments in the book contain references to the bone houses and I was audibly squealing when I caught on to what was happening. I don't think I can elaborate on either moment without giving a spoiler to either book, but the links between the books made me appreciate the characters, stories and the struggles so much more. It was a beautiful thing to read. Fourth love, Mare, our leading lady and the raid of the bulk of the book. She is a water diviner who was stolen from her family for her powers and forced into working for the prince. She feels as if she's never had control over her life and her only choice was to run away over and over again, and I felt that her emotional growth was realistically written. I am a sucker for water powers, especially someone who uses the water inside someone else's body to their advantage. I did have a fear that she would be an overpowered character due to the extent of her magic abilities, but there were consequences of her using her power, especially in the finale, and it just made me appreciate the author further. She describes herself as someone who is saved by stubbornness rather than bravery, and I've never related to her character more. She's also bisexual and her attraction to both genders is explored on page, and I love how subtly and naturally it's introduced. The thing that stopped me rating this book higher was the other characters. I did prefer the main characters of the Bone Houses. I think because there were only two for most of the books, they didn't have to compete for time on the page. They had two clear, distinct, contrasting personalities, while the larger cast of the Drowned Woods blended together for me. And one of the characters did not feel significant to the plot at all, proven by the lack of impact their death had. Most of the characters were only there for the heist and their storylines revolved around it so it wasn't much room for character development or a satisfying arc that did not focus on becoming rich or getting revenge and I felt like the amount of space they took on page could be used to delve deeper into Fane's curse or the other folk or more corgi content. However the large cast did allow for some exciting reveals later in the plot which showed how their paths crossed in the past without some of them knowing. This was one of my most anticipated books for the year and I do not have the words to express how pleased I am that it both lived up to and exceeded my expectations. Emily Lloyd-Jones has earned her place on my list of favourite authors and I can't wait to see what she comes up with next. So that's all I have to say about this book today. I believe it's available sometime this month and it's the book of the month for a number of book description boxes. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!